Hi guys, today I get to talk to you about the power of sacrifice. I am loving the season of Lent. Um, I know it's kind of interesting, it kind of feels like a Christian boot camp in some way, um, but as somebody who hasn't really experienced this amount of focused time um, growing up, I just started practicing Lent as an adult. I love getting a chance to focus on the things of God and to grow in those areas. And so today I'm talking about the power of sacrifice. And so I'm going to read you a story out of Luke 7, 36 through the rest of the chapter. And essentially we're just going to look at somebody who gave a really great example of sacrifice. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And when he went into the Pharisee's house, and re oh, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at a table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees who had when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, not to Jesus, to himself. If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. I love that Simon said this to himself and Jesus responds to him. I think that's kind of cool. Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. A certain moneylender who had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. I can't imagine the experience that this woman faced when she walked into this Pharisee's house. So first of all, I'm just going to give you an example. If you were to bust into a dinner party, find the most important person at that table, start crying, get your tears all over his feet, wipe it off with your hair, and then bring in your most expensive, most valuable thing that you can find, smearing that stuff on his feet, and crying the whole time. Um, you can imagine that that would be a relatively large display um, that could really, really make you feel like uh, uh, embarrassed even. And I look at what she did. She walked into someone's home who she knew she would be judged by. It so says this woman who was a sinner. And then even uh, Simon or the people at the table are like, if he was a prophet, he would know like she's dirty. And I want us to, first of all, not disconnect from either of these people groups. So we all have sinned. We're all her and we all have judged, we are all Simon. Um, and in this, in this situation, I understand that by setting yourself, yourself apart, by making a sacrifice for Jesus, there is a chance that we're gonna be judged by the people around us. There is a chance. And I would argue that Jesus is right there defending us. I would argue that, that he's right there um, giving us peace, forgiving us. And it even says, your faith has saved you. Um, I really believe that making a sacrifice is a step of faith. It's a step of faith to believe that God is going to meet us in this extra step that we're taking. Um, so for Lent, we have three main focuses, which is prayer, giving, and fasting. And the fourth is just reflecting upon that. But living a life for Jesus, it does take sacrifice. As I know the word sacrifice to mean, it's just setting yourself apart for something that's holy. and. Um, God is the only one that's holy. And so we're setting ourselves apart for God. We're setting something in our life apart for God. And so as we see this woman who went above and beyond, so she didn't just kiss his head, she kissed his feet. She didn't just anoint his head, she anointed his feet. She, um, she didn't just bring water, she used her own tears. Something that was part of her, that was valuable to her. And so during this season, I encourage you, 
Let's look at the things that are valuable in our life. Let's give those over to Jesus. Um, I have a tendency to really, really look at the relationships in my life that are valuable and I hold on to it and I worry about it and I think about it and I don't think about it and I do all of these things. But let's remember, let's put those things in God's hands. Let's give those over to God because he's the only one that can care for them. Um, and so what sacrifice looks like to me daily is waking up every day, dying to my flesh, dying to the ways of the world and coming alive in who Jesus has made me to be. And I know that sounds vague and I know that sounds transcendental and all of those things, but to be honest with you, um, there is a step of faith that is involved in sacrifice. And Jesus even said, your faith has saved you, go in peace. And I believe that he is gonna say that to us who are making the sacrifice to live a life for him. Leah, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Let's not forget, we have all sinned. Let's remember that Jesus is in front of us and he is worthy of everything that we can bring him. So let's not skimp. Let's bring everything to him. Um, I hope you guys are really enjoying this season of Lent and that your relationship with God is developing in a brand new way. We'll see you soon.